The creation of textures is very important if we want our model to look good later. We need to do more than simply give the model a single color. If possible, our objects should have an ambient occlusion texture. And in order to make it look its best, it needs to have a well-defined UV map. What this means and how we create them will be covered in this tutorial. To start with, we open Maya. First, we'll cover the basics to help us understand what a UV map actually is. A simple cuboid should be sufficient for our initial explanations. Once we have our cuboid, we open Window UV Texture Editor. This is the window we'll be using in the subsequent steps. In the UV Texture Editor, we can see our cuboid opened up and spread out. Now, if we change to face mode in the main window and move our mouse cursor over it, we can see how the surfaces are also highlighted in the UV Texture Editor. In the UV Texture Editor, we can also change the UV mode to select either a single UV or multiple UVs at once. The corresponding vertices, for example the points of the model, are displayed in the main window in green. UVs are the coordinates that map the three-dimensional surfaces of the object onto a two-dimensional texture. A good example of this is a simple map where the surface of the Earth is transferred to a sheet of paper. In this case, Maya has already created the UVs for us. It works well for geometrically simple shapes like our cuboid here, but when it comes to more complex shapes, we will have to edit the UVs ourselves. Therefore, we can only really count on Maya to create reliable textures for simple shapes. More complicated shapes will require our input. To illustrate this, we'll set a checkerboard pattern in the UV Texture Editor. Once we have enabled the option, we can see the pattern is displayed in the UV Texture Editor, but is not yet shown in the viewport. This can be changed by setting the renderer. So we click on Renderer and then on Viewport 2.0. Now we can see the checkerboard pattern on our cuboid in the viewport and see that the squares of the pattern have no distortion. Switching into UV mode, we'll now select a few UVs. If we then shift the UVs, we can immediately see the effect it has on our cube. Of course, we don't really need to change the UVs in our current example, as Maya generated them fairly well for our simple cuboid. However, changing it gives us a good example of how UVs should not look. If we look at our cube, we can see how the texture that has been mapped to it is now distorted. Obviously, this shouldn't happen. We can remove our changes with Menu, Edit, Undo. It is important for all objects, especially the more complex kinds, that the UVs are laid in such a way as to make the texture as undistorted as possible. And this is why the creation and placement of UVs can become a major challenge. This can be illustrated quite easily by expanding our cuboid. In face mode, we simply select a side of our cuboid and click the Extrude option in the Polygons menu. Now we adjust the modulation schizmo and can see that the new surfaces are very distorted. If we select one of our newly created surfaces, we can see that it's only represented as a single line in the UV texture editor rather than a surface. This explains how the texture of the 3D object has become so distorted. So we are going to need to alter our UVs to get a texture that looks good. An easy, albeit longer method of doing this is to use the auto mapping function of Maya. We simply click on our deformed cuboid and then go to create UVs in the menu and select automatic mapping. We will then have to adapt the options in auto mapping to the object we're mapping. By clicking on Project, we can see that the texture on the object no longer appears distorted. However, if we look in the UV Texture Editor, we can see that the UVs are no longer connected to each other, or at best only partially connected. This is a crucial point, as a good arrangement of UVs is one where as many of the UVs, or more importantly their edges, are as close as possible. So for the best results, we'll need to bring the edges of the UVs together ourselves. Let's begin by raising the upper surface slightly, so that we can then attach the other surfaces to it more easily. To do this, we need to click on the Move UV Shell tool in the menu and select a point on our surface. The whole surface is then automatically selected and we can then reposition it slightly. 
Then we activate the UV lattice tool and switch to Edge mode. If we now select the edge of the reposition surface, we can see from the color where the edges of the planes should match up. As these two edges are ultimately one and the same, we want to merge them together. This can be done quickly and easily with the Move and Sew UVs function, which can be found in the menu bar under this symbol here. Or as a shortcut, you can click the right mouse button whilst holding the Shift key to open a menu where you'll find the corresponding option. We'll do this a couple of times to pull the surfaces of our object together. Once we're done, we can see there are still a few gaps in our object in the slanted areas. We can close these gaps in the same way. However, we can see some of the edges are now partially distorted. In this case, we can fix this fairly easily. To do this, we leave the UV lattice tool by clicking in the empty space with the left mouse button and then pressing the W key. Now we simply select each line of vertices and use the Align Selected UVs 2 tool to line up the vertices. Then, to check the quality of our work, we enable the Display UV Distortion option in the menu. This will color the UV surfaces according to their distortion. The closer the color is to a pure white, the better the mapping of the corresponding surface onto the three-dimensional object has been. Our result isn't completely perfect, but it's good enough for what we need. Finally, it's worth noting that there are a number of tutorials on the subject of UV creation available on the Internet. A good modder should master as broad a range of tools and techniques as possible in order to achieve the best possible results for their mods. In this respect, we highly recommend you continue with the topic, acquiring as much knowledge as you can as when it comes to creating UVs. The correct technique both simplifies and significantly speeds up the creation process.